Hi, everybody. Welcome back for the next installment in our excellence training series on objections. And so this week, we are going to be going over two new objections. If you've missed any of the prior weeks, you can go onto our team page and look for the guide that has this objection series in it. And the prior two recordings will be there. Let me drop this down a little bit so I can see you and be looking at my laptop at the same time. There we go. All righty. Um, so I want to always remind you guys that objections from people are typically not necessarily something. It's very rare that their objection is actually the objection. It's usually they are looking for more information or they have a misunderstanding about something. So you always want to ask questions and be looking for what that, what is that additional information that they're looking for? What is it that they're not understanding quite correctly? And so they have a misconception about it. And so you wanna be able to explain that to them. And again, I stress this in every video, we do not wanna just answer an objection. We want to overcome it. So we don't wanna just give information we want to make sure that their uh, question is answered to a degree that it gets them past that being an issue or a stumbling block. You wanna get them past that to where they're like, okay, that's not an issue for me anymore. Because that's what they're telling you is I have an issue with this specific topic, okay? Um, another thing, I don't know if I've touched on this on the prior videos, but one thing that is super important when you're talking about plexus is your posture your belief and your confidence. So if your belief in this business is low or your belief in this, uh, not just this business, but our products isn't sky high and off the charts, that is going to come across in your delivery and in your discussion and in the way you present yourself. So you're going to be tentative if you don't have a strong posture and sky high belief about these products. And I will give you an example today that I experienced today. And I went to the Pasadena showcase house where they like renovate a mansion and you get to walk through it and you're on the grounds and there were vendors there. And I went a little cuckoo and I figured I'd buy myself a mother's day gift. So I bought these bracelets. And, um, as I was trying the bracelets on, I asked the lady how much they were. And it was funny because she said, Oh, this one is this much. And this one is this much. And I was kind of like, Oh, I might put these bracelets back. And she was like, she was like, I mean, I just can't believe how cheap they are for the quality that they are. I mean, this would get this at Nordstrom, this would cost you triple. And just like without a doubt. And I was laughing because I was like, I'm in sales. I get it. And it's like, but it's true. It's like, she's confident about what she is. And, and she said, because they make the jewelry and they sell to like stores to sell it. But here she was selling it direct. She was basically giving us the wholesale price. She didn't say it like that, but she kept saying, you know, we make it and we sell to, to stores to sell it, but we're here for the showcase house. And, um, but she just was like, yeah, I just can't believe how, you know, that's so cheap for a bracelet like that. And, um, and I was just like, oh, cause I was like, oh, I'm not paying that. And I almost put it back. Well, here you go. I bought three. So she showed me the value. She was confident in what she was selling. And there was no doubt that it was like, that was too much. It was kind of like, that's nothing for what this is. And um, oftentimes I think that we feel like that. If we go into something thinking, oh, our probiotics are expensive, then we don't present them like the value that they are. But if we are like, our probiotics are worth three times the amount what they cost, do you even understand what kind of a bargain you're getting? Um, it's easier to present. And I know that when you have experience with that, it's easier to do that. Like, Johanna, I'm sure could talk about it because of what she used to spend on probiotics. But I think it's easy for us to be able to say, look, I know that our, you know, be confident, not use this in your objections, but be confident in, you know, our products are high quality. They're bioavailable, which means your body absorbs them. So you are paying a value for something that is way more valuable than what, it, what we're paying. So you have to have that confidence behind you. And if you don't, for any reason, there are several ways that you can build your belief. One of them is to be getting on our real people, real stories calls that happen on Monday and Thursday nights. 
If you listen to those, you hear how these products are changing people's lives and you definitely will appreciate them and be amazed by them. You can get onto all the trainings that happen on the Plexus Ambassador page. They're constantly sharing stories and training about the products and learning. So confidence comes with knowledge and belief. And so get on training calls, watch this series. If you haven't watched it, make sure that you're staying a little bit knowledgeable. You don't have to know everything about a product, but just to hear a testimony or to hear the video where a product's getting spotlighted on the Plexus Ambassador page, it reminds you of little things that you can talk about about that product and makes you more confident when you're sharing. And so a lot of it comes from that being part of your foundation. So don't forget that you need that foundation. You can't just take what I'm teaching you here and turn around and sound confident. You have to be confident on your own about these products and the value that people are getting. And if you're new, you may not have that belief and that confidence built up just yet. And that's actually gonna be one of the objections we cover. But in the meantime, that's okay. You don't need to know everything right away. That's why you use your sponsor. You use three-way chats. You can invite people to these real stories, real people calls, and we do the presenting for you and people are sharing their testimonies. And so you don't have to know everything to get started and to be able to do this right from the get-go. Okay, so the objection that we're gonna talk about first today is I don't have time. Again, you always wanna to relate to the person. You want to let them know, I understand you. I hear you. I get it. Unless you were someone who had all the time in the world because you had no responsibilities whatsoever, you probably can relate to this objection to some degree. Even if you, I mean, I feel like a little, I was thinking about myself, right? When I started Plexus, I didn't have a job. I had quit my job. But I was thinking to myself, but I had three kids. I had a household to run and I was still making special appearances as a lawyer. So I did work a little bit. And I have a kid with special needs. So I'm pretty sure that, I mean, having children keeps you busy. Having a husband can keep you busy. Having a kids with special needs adds a layer and working adds a layer. So it was like, you don't have to be working full time to be busy. And as most of you know, the less structure and things we have to do, it's almost like the less we get done because the less organized we need to be. But I just want you to relate to people. So I totally understand. So someone tells you, I don't have time. I get it. I totally get it. And you could say, you know, we've had a ton of people join Plexus who have full-time jobs. Or I myself, when I joined Plexus, didn't think that I had time. I had three kids. One was home, not even in school. So with me full-time, I had a husband. I had a household to run. I had tons of appointments for um, my child with special needs. And I was still working a little bit. So fitting all that in. So I totally get it. When I found Plexus, I didn't think I could fit one more thing into my schedule. But what I found was that I didn't really need more time. What I needed was a bit of discipline. So what I mean is I just found a way to cut out some time wasters. And then you can talk about time wasters. Like where, where could you, we find a couple minutes, 15 to 30 minutes in your day. And that's easy, right? Scrolling would add probably an hour a day to all of our lives, if not more. Maybe watching TV, Netflix. There's a lot of people who have given up a lot of Plex ambassadors. You'll find out they don't watch TV anymore because they're busy working and um, developing and all that kind of good stuff. Or another way would be to get up early. Get up 30 minutes early will add time to your day. Put your kids to bed and commit to staying up, you know, 15, 20 minutes longer, just doing some tasks that will help your business. Okay. So I loved that response. I felt like I didn't have the time either, but you know what I found is that I just needed a little bit more discipline. And I would bet you that like 99% of the people can relate to it's a discipline issue, not a time issue. Right. Uh, another way that you can approach this is ask someone, I totally get it. You know, say they do work. There's a lot of people on our team that do work full-time or initially they do, and then they're able to leave and say, I just want to ask you something. If you had endless amounts of time, 
in your day, would you be building a business with me? Because then you can also get to the root of if time is just a cover up for a different issue. So if you had endless amount of time, would you be building a business with me? If they're like, heck yeah, I would. Then that's when I would say, okay, well, I found that a lot of times it's not time. It's about discipline. Is there any way in your schedule that we can look into building in an extra 30 minutes? Because what I did was I don't turn the TV on anymore, or I don't get on my phone and scroll until I've done what I need to do. Or like we said, get up early. There's different ways to work time in. Um, so let me see what else. So those are important. Let me see what else. Oh, here's another example that you can use. Okay. Fitting this in around your life. I, it's so bizarre because I just heard this analogy the other day in a totally different context. And then I also heard this like at a church women's event years ago. So it's so crazy that this is coming up for the third time. But you can also compare your life to, right, where they said, if you fill a jar, if you have sand and little rocks and big rocks, and you put the sand in first, and then you put the little rocks in, you're probably not going to fit the big rocks. And the big rocks are the main thing and the important thing. But if you put the big rocks in, and then the little rocks, the little rocks kind of fall and shuffle and find their spot. And then you pour the sand in, and it just falls all around all of those things. And then you can get all three in. So comparing it to that, like, I totally get it. And I want you to know that in my life, my family and my kids are the rocks and being at their school and doing all these extra things. Those are the smaller stones and the sand is my plexus business. And when I focus on my kids and I, I prioritize that, and I know that I need to get things done by a certain time. And I know what my schedule is. So those littler rocks, I'm off doing that then I know where I can pour the sand in and it flows around all of that and I can get things done. So for example, for me, I know that my kids now are in school all day. So I get up and what's on my calendar. I might have a meeting. I might have a training. I might um, have a lunch date. I typically want to get up and do a workout, read my Bible. So I know that where I have a gap, that's where I need to focus and dis be disciplined and get those few things that I need to do for my business done so that when my kids come home, I can focus on them and not be worried about this. So is that something that we could talk about where that might be able to fit into your day? Because nobody's day is typically scheduled from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed. Again, it's not a time issue. It's a discipline issue. And so you really want to paint a picture of what a day would look like, what it would look like to find that time to have that discipline. And you want to paint a picture about how this is going to benefit them and their family. And so one thing that, and if you're in book club, we talked about what you value and putting that first and how that benefits everything around you, right? So you do want to paint a picture of how this could benefit their family. So I get it. My, my big rocks are my family. So when they come home, I want to focus on them. So while there, I don't schedule a lunch date when on a Saturday, I schedule it when my kids are at school because it doesn't interfere with my family time. And so the sand, which is my plexus business goes around that. Okay. I have a lunch date at this time. So the hour before that, I'm going to be doing what I need to be doing for my business. I'm going to send those messages, answer the questions, do that kind of thing. But you know why that's so valuable to me to focus on that and concentrate on that those 15 minutes or hour before that lunch date is because when my family comes home in the evening and that's where I want to spend my quality time, I want to be in the kitchen, making dinner, talking to my daughter as she comes in from school, watching the kids run around the neighborhood, letting the kids come in my house and, you know, raid our pantry for chips and be enjoying that is because I was focused earlier on what I needed to get done. And so now that's over with done and off my mind and not I don't have to think about it anymore. So a little bit of discipline has changed my family's life for the better because I've turned that into a business where I get my free time and I don't have to worry about what's going on at all. So paint a picture of the benefit that this is going to have. And when someone says they don't have time, a lot of times it's not so much, like I said, that they don't have time because we don't, most of us are not scheduled it's what they're saying is show me why this is worth my time. We do things that we think is worth our time. 
So we have time. When people say they don't have time, it means that that's not a priority, typically, because we make time for the things that we want to do. We all can have, have experienced this. Somebody invites you to go somewhere you've been dying to go, you figure it out. So if you can show someone why this is worth their time, then they will make the time. They will be disciplined to be able to fit this into their life. And so of course you wanna finish with feedback and making sure that you've overcome the objection and not just answered it. So you wanna ask them, tell me your thoughts. What kind of things are you thinking now? And let them answer you, okay? Um, okay, let's see. And then second objection we're gonna talk about today is what, oh, sorry. I want to see my own results first. Okay. So sometimes we hear, well, I don't want to share. I want to, I want to get my own results before I share with anybody. And what this objection is telling you is that they want their own belief in the products. This is a belief issue. I need to see if these products really work before I tell anybody. Okay. So again, you want to do feel felt found. So I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same way. And really, this is another reason why you would be great at this because you're a person full of integrity and character. And that's exactly the kind of people that I like to work with. You want to believe in what you're promoting. I get it. I was the same because you're going to get passionate about something when you believe in it, right? That's exactly what's going to make you so successful. And here's what I found. I talked about this last week. <laughs> Here's what I found. It's kind of like being a real estate agent. An agent doesn't have to live in every house before he knows that it's a great house. They just need to know the person's needs and how what they have matches that and is a solution for them. So what I have found as I've learned about these products is that most of the health issues that we have in this country lead back to three root problems. Unstable blood, sugar levels, gut health, and inflammation. And that's exactly what our products address. So you're explaining to people why Plexus is so awesome. You know, this is why Plexus, I always tell people, Plexus isn't magic. It doesn't solve everything, but we what we do is we, our products address the root issues, which is those three, right? Blood, blood sugar imbalance, gut health issues and inflammation. And because Plexus is helping those, it seems like it's helping everybody with everything. And so that's a great thing to point out. And then you could also say something like, you know, most people don't necessarily go to bed worried about health issues, but they do go to bed worried about money. And Plexus is an answer to both. You have something in your hands that can help the majority of the people around you. People you've probably already started thinking about. Has anybody come to mind? Who's come to your mind already? And let them know. So this is about helping people solve a problem. So I love this real estate agent analogy. I had never heard it before, but I thought it was awesome because it's so true, right? They sell houses all day long that they never lived in. And the example I always used to say was, and it's the same, it's the same idea is that you're meeting a need for someone. So let's just say that you're someone who never wears high heels, but you work at the shoe department in Nordstrom. You're still going to sell high heels to the lady who comes in looking for shoes for her ball gown. You're still going to know about them. You're going to say, I know exactly what you need. We got these beautiful shoes in last week that match that dress perfectly. Let me go show you. They have a need. You have a supply. You can meet their need. That doesn't mean you have to wear heels to sell heels. And it's the same idea. So you have to be confident again, because you don't wear the heels. It doesn't mean the Jimmy shoes aren't worth the value. They're amazing for people who wear heels. So that is something also that that's, this is a problem I hear a lot when someone says, I don't use that product. So I don't sell it. I kind of get that because you're not, you're always like, oh my gosh, look what I found. I love this. Look at my sweater. Look at my shoes. 
But again, we are in the problem solving business. We're not here to just promote the one thing that we love. And so you want to think about what is their need and what do I have over here that can help them meet their need, regardless of whether I use it or not. And this is another reason why it's important for you as a seasoned ambassador and a new ambassador to be on things like the real people, real stories calls or the trainings from corporate, because you hear stories and you hear products used, or you hear of ailments that you didn't have, but someone has, and the solution and the um, relief that they got by using our products. And that makes you go, oh my gosh. And then when someone else says, I have this problem, you're like, oh, I just heard this lady talking about this. And she took ease and it totally helped her. So again, that's a belief building issue that comes from knowledge, right? So we keep learning, we keep listening to testimonies, our belief continues to grow, our posture becomes more confident. And then we're presenting and talking to people in a way that is more believable than like, oh, I know it's, it's a lot, but like, it's not a lot. It's a great value. I'm actually surprised it doesn't cost more given the stories I've heard of how they've helped people. I'd pay double for that. So there's a difference in the delivery. Alrighty. So that's it for today. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. I'll take questions if you have any for a couple minutes, but otherwise I hope you guys have a great week and we'll continue our series next week. Thanks for joining me.